But whatever. Anyway, looks like we're going to be on Onyx Cauldron for this second time, or not second time, but the lower pre finals. Because that's the map. That's how the band's laid out. Basically, people banned maps until they got maps that they could agree on. And for the losers pre finals, that is going to be Onyx Cauldron. Or on Tombstone Desert. Because, okay, they're going for Honest Cauldron. Because Honest Cauldron is going to be a bit of a longer match. Oh well. This is an interesting map, though. This is one of those maps that's very specific to itself. Because you have the Southwest has this massive amount of economy, but it's very difficult to get in and out of. The Northeast has less economy, easier to get in and out of, but also, as a result, harder to defend. And there's a lot of little things you can do here and there. This is one of those maps that if you want to learn a map, this is a map to learn. It's got a lot going for it in a lot of different ways. And a lot of different ways that the matchups can play out. For 2v2, I don't know how well it's going to work, though. I feel like it's going to be a fairly quick one way or the other situation. Like, someone's going to get southwest or northeast and just going to turn that into economic advantage that snowballs. I don't imagine it's going to be a super even match as soon as one person gets an advantage. But, still waiting on that. So, with that set up... Ah, there we go. There's the bracket. Huzzah! Oh, and Challenge is actually listening to me now. Cool. Anyway, yeah, there's the bracket. Golden King Stat in your insane neck. It will be an auto loss for for Go for Solar Hill and Google Frog and... Wait, Mackie and Ophelius? What? That's off. Yeah, because we're telling people Magnum Fields need losses, but they also need to be dropped here, specifically. I'm actually kind of surprised that challenge didn't see that, because the group stage standings, are, you know, it should be 1 and 4 versus 2 and 3, which would actually solve the problem. Anyway, we can get this game going. Because this is going to be a... This is going to be quite the game. Like I said, I still think it'll be like 10-15 minutes just because Onyx Call... It'll be 10-15 minutes or it'll be like half an hour's log. There's not really much in between. So, that's really what I'm wondering. Like, what is it going to be? But, hey, we can start any time. I think we're just waiting on Mackie, actually. Yeah, Swordtail is pinged. Yeah, Mackie's the only one that I don't know. Okay, so we have Losers Prefinals and Onyx Cauldron starting up right now. And the brackets should be all sorted out by the time we get back and get to see them again. Because tiebreakers are weird and cause weird things to happen. But yeah, at this point, this is basically just you know, this match, and then whoever wins this match is going to be up against the... The winners of the last match, which is going to be Ikins and... Oh, let me out. <laughs> Stupid piece of shit. Ah, sorry. Zerka is being a bit of a pain in the butt right now when it comes to actually letting me do things. But as I was saying, with the... Yeah, the brackets the way they are. Whoever wins this then fights against the number two team that is near insane... Yeah, near insane... Wait, who... Damn it, I can't remember who won now. I don't remember who won. I just cast that game. I must be really tired. Sorry about that. Whoever won that game, which I think was near Insaniac, but... Or, no, they... Oh, shoot, I can't remember who won. Sorry, I don't remember who's in the top, honestly. I actually have no idea... It is completely escaping me who is currently laying in the finals. But whoever lost the upper bracket finals, they're going to be fighting against whoever wins this. That's the important thing. I don't know who it is, but whoever it is, that's who it's going to be. And we're still waiting on Mackie. There we go. Okay, cool. We are good to go. 
So Cloaky and looks like Amph versus nothing. No factories at all. Who needs factories? Who needs factories when you have all this other stuff going on? Like terrain and buildings. And okay, never mind. Cloaky versus Amphib. Weird economy focus right at the start, but a bit of a proxy clicky from Mackie. So, same factory matchups both sides round. Although, Orf going for an immediate Grizzly. They want to win now. I think what they want to do is try to put something in the center of the lake. But, I mean, both teams have that idea. And really, I totally agree with these factory setups because Amphib on the lakes works really well on this map. Cloaky, on the other hand, they're just fast. They can get around everywhere. So, that helps deal with the fact that this is a rather small choke point. Still, though, Southeast... They are going in strong to that southwest side. They want to take it immediately. They want to make sure the northeast as well. Get all that... Get the scouting on the economically important positions. And then work from there. But, I mean, that fast grizzly, I don't... I don't know. I mean, it's being built up. There's a lot of build power available to take it and make it actually work. And a lot of build power being spent to make sure that Google Frog and Sortail cannot deal with it in the meantime. And getting rid of that Conjurer is huge. Google Frog not being able to expand over to the southwest. Nicely done, Mackie, with that setup on the Glaives. That is exactly perfect. Getting rid of plenty of Glaives in the process, too. Like, this was an amazing start for Mackie. The entire southwest side, like, they can take that whenever they'd like now. Or at least, if they theoretically try to take it. It's still clear that they're more trying to prevent their opponents from expanding than trying to expand themselves. Southeast has clearly no interest in building up. They want to get this Grizzly. They want to push the Grizzly hard. They want to get everything early. And they're having a very difficult time doing that because wind generators are not helping them. Like, these wind generators on this map, on that part of the map, this map has a lot of variety for wind generators. But where they are, 0.3. Up here, 0.6. On the hills, 1.1. If you can get them up here, yeah, you got... But to do that without gunships is not easy. Especially to do that with commanders is not easy. But at this point, Southeast, they do have the energy needed to use the metal to get this Grizzly up fast. It's just a matter of whether or not that Grizzly can actually do what it needs to do in the meantime, because that's one Grizzly against an entire army's worth of units, and that army is expanding. Like, there's no expansions being built. This set of Glaives is entirely meant to destroy any expansions, to get rid of metal extractors, and it's no longer working. Google Frog able to counter that with a Beam Laser. One more Glaive, however, able to come in here and get rid of another Conjurer. So at least that's a bit of mileage. They can get rid of that Conjurer, and getting rid of the Metal Extractor at the same time is clearly the goal here. Then I'll move back up, get that Conjurer, get that Metal Extractor, reduce the amount of metal that Recursion can build, and get that Grizzly up now. After that, it's going to be boatloads of archers, so... This is very clearly a cheese strategy. They want to win, or they die. Like, that is the entire concept here. That Grizzly push with the Archer support needs to take this game, and at the same time, a bunch of ducks in the back, which I don't think actually saw anything. No, they didn't, so there's no knowledge of that Grizzly. There is knowledge of Amphib, but Archer, okay, sure, Archer, that's the thing you build. The fact that there's only one Archer is a little suspicious, but then again, one Archer does deal with several ducks quite nicely, so there you go. The thing at this point that's a little curious is that Mackie, now they're producing Glaives again, but there's not much, and really, it just, it feels like, overall, Southeast has done everything in their power to hide the Grizzly until right now, as it gets revealed, wiping a Glaive off the face of the Earth. And the response is going to likely be Ronin. Ronin, boys, yeah, perfectly appropriate response. Like, this is exactly what I expect to see. And Goofra going for size, not what I expect to see, but a very intelligent response nonetheless. Actually, probably the best response you could go for, because like 10 of those surrounding the Grizzly. The Grizzly cannot deal with that, and they're dealing 2,000 damage per swing. So yeah, four or five swings. I mean, some of them will die in the process, but that's still enough. You know, after six or seven swings, the Grizzly is definitely dead. As opposed to that, though... We have the Grizzly. Swordtail deciding, you know what? Fine. We've got plenty of cash. We can build a Grizzly. We've got 30 metal per second. However, you guys did it. You guys cheesed that out. We can get it for real and get several of them. We can get an army of Grizzlies. You just get the one. And that seems to be fine. Rafflius is focusing on darts. Sorry, on ducks. On archers. Not much else. And Mackie managing to get a bit of expansion rating. Actually, that, ooh, that could go up here. There's a slight path that the Glaives could use to get up to the other side. But it looks like that's not the focus. The focus is to make sure the southwest is clear. I imagine, and actually not imagine, I can see that there's a conjurer right there waiting to expand to the southwest. So that is the very clear goal. But at this point, Recursion has built up to deal with the Grizzly. Like, this Grizzly is not going to be winning the game. It might help win the game, but it's not going to be on its own winning the game. If we can get Google Frog's commander, that's a threat. 
But Goofrox Commander will be able to get away from this, and the Scythe is already in place. Oh, but the Scythe might be spotted by the Archer. The Decloak Radius is not high enough, but the Scythe still getting spotted. Only one Scythe, They're not, not all ten. That's the thing, because the entire army of Scythes was not available, it won't be enough, and the Glaive's coming in. I like this micro, I like this positioning. They're circling around the, the Grizzly, making it harder for the Grizzly to deal with them. But the Archer support is there. Like, that is really smart. Like, Archer plus Grizzly is a great combo. And on top of that, the Ducks coming in to support. Glaives as well coming around the map just to provide harassment. So Mackie is on point getting the harassment in there. While Orphelius as well just having as much distraction as possible. The, this Grizzly is not going to go anytime soon. And the Archer is helping out as best they can as well. Like, that combo is amazing. Still, though, Recursion has expanded quite a bit, and it's going to be a little bit of work to remove as much expansion as possible. Two more Metal Extractors will go down, or at least one will go down. The other one will be defended successfully by Google Frog, just barely for now. But Orphelius with those ducks should be able to take it out. And if they manage to get to the Glaives, those ducks will have a field day. At the same time, Mackie is building up the southwest and putting that pressure. And this is where the Grizzly is really coming to, to fruition, is that that Grizzly, that Grizzly there put so much pressure onto the recursion side. The recursion side had to then entirely shift their production to dealing with this. Like, that's the thing, is that recursion... Are they, are they not on voice chat? I thought they were on voice chat. No. No, they, they are... What? Oh, okay. Discord apparently went weird for them. And the mic went off, but... Yeah, okay, that's odd. Because, yeah, they're in Discord voice chat right now. Anyway, back to the game proper. The Grizzly provided the pressure needed on top of the, the Conjure being destroyed over here by Mackie at the very start of the game. That provided a lot of the pressure needed to make this work well. Because I... How is this... Hang on. I normally don't have to deal with this setting, but sometimes you do. Mm. No, that actually is what I'm doing. Okay, never mind. It is smooth mesh. Weird. Anyway. That's not going to help any if I switch. Actually, no, it is. No, no, that's right. No, no, I want to turn that off. Thanks for pausing at this point, because this is showing where this smooth edge scrolling can occasionally fall apart. Or smooth mesh scrolling occasionally falls apart. Yeah, okay, there we go. Sort of. Not really. Nah, whatever. Anyway, the point is... the Why does that keep happening? Did someone break CUFC? I'm better not broke my CUFC. Nah, anyway, the point is, is that the, the Grizzly coming in here managed to do a lot of damage... Whatever. The Grizzly coming in here managed to do a lot of damage, getting rid of, or rather, a lot of pressure. And that was a big thing. Because it put that pressure on there, it gave enough momentum to Southeast, gave them enough room to breathe, that they could push in that harassment. They could get in a lot of damage, despite the expansion, and also force their opponents to go for size and go for Grizzlies and do stuff that's kind of expensive, while they're able to build up an army behind this Grizzly. If the size had been all built up and worked, it might have had a chance, but not the way it went. Now that Grizzly just needs to find some mileage, maybe get rid of the opponent Grizzly, and if it manages to do that, that is going to be a very strong position to work from. However, there's a Spectre, there's the... or Phantom, rather, and there's a bunch of Glaives, but the support Glaives coming in, the support Ducks coming in, the Grizzly, however, is still going to go down in the process, and that is an opening for Google Frog and Swordtail. It's not much of an opening with the economic lead in favor of Southeast quite strongly, but Southeast does not have another Grizzly right now. They have more coming online, but they did not build another one in the meantime. They're building support forces entirely. While the Grizzly is up for recursion, they have some time. It is a tight timing window. They're taking as much advantage of it as they can, especially with the Scythe over here. But it is not much they can work with. And now that they've revealed that Scythe, it's even less to work with. Still, though, that Grizzly does have boys to support it. It does have an army to work with. It does have an economy behind it. It's just that it also only has about two minutes or so. It's really a question of what value you can get in those two minutes, especially with the size and the Glaives. And they're getting quite a bit of value. The Glaives are getting loads of value. They're getting stuff now, but they managed to get a fair bit of value beforehand. And they got rid of a Conjurer. That is the big value. That is what they wanted. Metal Extractors aside, they got rid of a Builder. They're slowing down the re-expand. And the Northeast, that's a bit more well defended. So it's harder for them to get in. It's harder for that Grizzly to actually do anything. But that's fine. 
However, Mackey coming in here, helping support that, making sure that this entire net Southwest is clear as they rebuild it, which they will do immediately. So this isn't the simplest thing in the world. At this point, it's very clear. Conch is not going to be... There's a conch in the middle. That's going to be handy. That's going to be defenses. I don't know why I talked about that. Sorry about that. Fatigue. Anyway, the conch here is what I really cared about as it's rebuilding. And the, the, com, the com in the northeast corner, still fine. So at this point, despite the loss of the grizzly, all that money has now been funneled into a bunch of other stuff. A bunch of glaives, a bunch of darts, a bunch, sorry, darts, a bunch of ducks, a bunch of boys, well, not even boys, just du ducks, maybe archers. And they're up against the grizzly, but they have a much stronger economy and a bunch of lightweight forces, and they're able to wipe through pretty much everything built up on the recursion side. I don't see any way recursion has to surviving this. Their grizzly is way out of position. They have their, they have their glaives coming back in here. But the Clickbot Factory, not even the concern. It will be destroyed, however, because why not? Get rid of that Clickbot Factory. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. No, never mind. But still, there's enough economic destruction. That Recursion, still not in a great spot. They have the Reclaim to work with. That's something. But that Reclaim is just becoming excess. And they don't have the energy to make that work either. At the same time, though, that wasn't really a huge amount of value, all things considered. Like, the Clickbot Factory does have to be repaired, which is a bit of a pain. And also, they are losing a lot of build power in the process. But their grizzly is still up. Still have a lot of my, uh, still a lot of, of attack power to work with, and still have a lot of damage to work with. And their opponents have lost most of their support forces. So now that the grizzly is back up, there's nothing to keep it from being swarmed. There's a couple of archers and a couple of ducks. They're slightly out of position. But even then, against the boy grizzly combo, that might not work. The glaives are the thing that's really down. That's the thing I'm really focused on. The lack of glaives. That makes the boys a little bit harder to deal with. We do have a phantom, though, and that will make the boys manageable to deal with. So it's not all over yet. However, that phantom there... Ooh, boy, that's where you'd really want to have some glaives. And actually, it looks like that's exactly what we're going to have. Mackie is aware of that and does have that set up. Also, this is inside of Southeast Territory, so they can get some workers to help repair. Whether that actually matters, though, hard to tell. Mackie's commander... Are they going to repair? Please tell me going to repair our fleeces. Grizzly, that would be extremely helpful. Because right now, this is not a great position. Granted, Orph does have another Grizzly coming up, but having more Grizzlies is good. This is a Grizzly arms race. They only have the Grizzly gap too wide. Otherwise, I mean, it's going to be a win for Groovefrog and Swordtail. After that really strong push from the southeast side and the southeast, they're still ahead economically. They still have a reasonably defensible economic position as well. But it's a matter of whether or not they can push forward through the army that's existing, because Right now, Recursion's army, I mean, they're they're in a reasonably strong spot. I'm trying to really wish I really wish this F with this view would just be in the corner. Like it would remember where it was during game and have that separate from when it's end game. But I digress. Army value is fairly even. Recursion is starting to build up though. Their metal use is a bit lower, but their metal income actually metal income as well. It's mostly just attrition. Attrition is starting to work out a little bit in, in recursion's favor. But that's not that's because the Grizzlies have not arrived yet. I mean, this one Grizzly getting in, but it's in the water, so it's getting those repairs. It doesn't even need a worker, just needs to get a bit of a bath. And that does most of the trick. However, the main problem is the Southwest is getting assaulted. So the question is whether or not these Grizzlies can peel. If these Grizzlies can go in around the back and actually get rid of their opponent's forces and get rid of the boys and get rid of the ducks and not get surrounded, there might be a chance, but it's a bit of a tight shot here. The fact is they don't manage to, they don't really deal with these small forces well. These Grizzlies are not... No, these Grizzlies found nothing. The boys go down, but that's fine. The Grizzlies are already in a position where they really have nothing to to gain from doing this. See, so yeah, I don't understand what the point of that push was. I think they were trying... I think what was trying to happen... Orphelius was trying to get the Grizzlies to distract the recursion forces, which kind of worked, but not well enough. And that's the problem. There wasn't... If they had the archers there to support it, it would have been fine. Like, two or three archers with those Grizzlies would have destroyed everything there, and that would have been a win. But, in this one case, like, no, you didn't have the support forces to make that work once their forces got diverted. Like, their force, diversion of their forces was achieved. It just didn't work. It didn't lead to your forces winning. Still, though, it does mean that this Grizzly has fewer support forces to work with. Not none, but fewer, which is helpful. But it may not be enough. I mean, that Grizzly still has most of his HP up. The Glaives are trying their best, but there is a support force. The Google Frog commander 
Google Frog's commander. That is a beam laser. That stops everything. And despite the fact that these sides are getting in the back lines and dealing some damage, well, that's known. So can I not go through the water? I think they might be stuck. Yeah, they are stuck. They can't go through the water in this angle. They aren't amphib units. And it's, uh, ironically, the amphib units coming out from Swordtail are going around the same path. But thankfully for them, that means they can find the size and stop them from being a threat. Overall, though, things are still turning around. It, I mean, despite all this, Southeast does have an economic advantage. Despite the fact that Recursion got a 4,000 metal attrition lead, the army value is still within 2,000 metal. The metal use is still going way up for Southeast. Like, Recursion is winning by attrition, but they don't have the money to make that work unless they continue winning by attrition. If they start getting pushed back, then it doesn't matter about attrition right now. All that matters is that they can't rebuild while Southeast totally can. And Southeast totally is. And that's the key thing. Because Southeast is rebuilding as well as they are, there's just not much that North we that the recursion team can do. All they can do is try to push them. They have the Grizzly. They have the advantage. And they got those the Phantoms trying to get rid of their opponent's Grizzly. But even then, that's not necessarily enough. Especially with the Grizzly healing up as it is. And right next to the water, able to heal up any time it wants. Of course, the ducks going underwater, that is going to be a threat. The ducks go in the water, they have the torpedoes. The grizzly cannot deal with that. The grizzly cannot fire underwater. I mean, granted, there are enemy ducks that will help deal with this. I mean, there are friendly ducks that help deal with the enemy ducks. And that's exactly what happens, but the, this grizzly needs to get out of the water. It is not safe in here. I mean, granted, it does heal up, but this is a, an attempt at a checkmate strategy against that grizzly. But it doesn't work. The Grizzly is going to stay in the water and be safe enough. It does take damage. It is down to 3,000 HP, but it has the healing. It has loads of caretakers. There we go. That's the sort of repair it needs. And Southeast at this point, they've managed to secure that Grizzly. They managed to secure the advantage economically. And they're getting some trouble. Like some Scythe trouble coming in, but mostly it's them creating Scythe trouble. Mackie Scythe's. Going in there, taking out everything they can for radar, everything they can for economy. Just making Google Frog and Swordtail have to run around the entire map, figuring out what the hell's going on, and how to stop it. But at this point, there's not much they have to deal with that. I mean, they don't have a lot of light forces they can just pass around the map to try to find anything being built up scythe-wise. But the scythes can just go wherever. On top of that, Glaives as well to try to provide even more distraction behind the main assault force. So really nice multi-pronged attack coming out here between Mackie and Orphelius. Orphelius in the front line, Mackie being the flanks. Mackie providing a little bit of support on the sides. And the sides just need to find a really good point to work from. And I think what they're going to try to do is take out the airplane plant. If they manage to kill that, no ravens. No ravens, that means the grizzlies are effectively immune to anything but phantoms. And at this point, I'm not even sure that matters with all the support forces having been built up. All the ducks on the map, even with the raven, it may not be enough. But at this point, it looks like it's primarily just for scouting purposes. Mackie does see what's going on and goes in. Oh, no, going for the fusion plant instead. Not a bad strategy, but it will be suicide for the sides. And at the same time... Sheesh, the camera. Same time, as the sides do go down, that, that is still a bit of a blow for recursion. Does deal some damage in the main base, but that's really the main blow, though. The fact that that got on the back, clearly making Google Frog decide, you know what? No. I'm done. This is over. I don't know if Sortail is going to keep going with this, but yeah, this this is surrender. Third, fourth place goes to Google Frog and Sortail. Mackie and Orphelia is moving on to the losers' finals. Please tell me the bracket has been sorted. The bracket has indeed been sorted. It was Gota and Kingstad, so Nier and Saniac are the ones at the bottom. We have a proper bracket. Actually, I don't need the standings here anymore, do I? Actually, no, might as well. This is the bottom right. That's what happened during this, the round robin section. And now we have the bracket. Anir and Saniac versus Mackie and Orphelius for the losers' finals. Well, a bit of an exciting match there. Certainly good map. I mean, I do, like I said, I do enjoy Onyx Cauldron. do enjoy a good game of Onyx Cauldron. And I'm glad to see how that game was a good game of Onyx Cauldron. Actually, it was in the middle, though. 17 minutes. So I was wrong in my initial prediction. It was kind of in the middle. Alright, with that, I'm 
Don't know which map is up next, but for now, I'm just going to take a short break while I wait for the Losers Finals to be set up, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> 